Hello everyone. My name is George Lannis with Ebersh Parker Climate Control Systems. Thank you all for joining this webinar. This webinar will focus on the Easy Start Pro controller and should be considered as basic level training, which will provide you with all information on the product and the scope of applications. This is the agenda for the next uh, 60 minutes during the webinar. Uh, we will have an overview of the Easy Start Pro controller. We will discuss the basic operation and function. Uh, we will review the user diagnostics that's available, um, how to activate the workshop mode and change parameters and settings. And finally, we'll end the webinar with some wiring for different configurations uh, using the controller. So as we begin, uh, let's discuss what are the features of the new Easy Start Pro controller. You can see there are several features, a host of features, in fact. It has an intuitive uh, navigation screen uh, that can be activated and operated using a control knob. Uh, it has a built-in temperature sensor that can be used for heater operation. More than one heater can be operated through one controller and also more than um, two identical heater groups can also be operated. Uh, so maximum of up to four heaters can be used uh, or operated through one controller. There is a diagnostic text function available for the user level, uh, which basically describes the fault as it happens. And then to back it up, there's detailed diagnostic functions which is available in the workshop mode. This controller also allows for the use of a residual heat function for our hydronic heaters. Um, this makes it more efficient. It's a more efficient heating mode uh, where we use the residual heat uh, from the engines initially before switching on the heater. The Easy Start Pro controller also can be used to activate uh, manually the high altitude mode uh, for our hydronic S312 volt series heaters. There is also the timer function, which is available on the Easy Start Pro controllers. And up to three programming blocks can be um, used at any given time. Moving on, um, the display is combined with an LED ring around the operating button that will give us a clear indication of the operational status of the heater. So it's more of a visual cue, sort of, in addition to the display itself. The design of the Easy Start Pro controller allows for different mounting positions. You could have a surface mount with concealed wiring, with visible wiring, flush mounted, etc. So it really gives a great uh, number of options while mounting the controller. Also, it comes with a really mounting optimized friendly ribbon cable that allows for easier mounting. The Easy Start Pro controller also allows for continuous operating runtime to be set for both the electronic and hydronic heaters. And then finally, the menu itself is available in 25 different languages, including the um, factory default, which is English and German. And these, these additional languages can be preset using the Easy Scan Diagnostic tool. So let's start to discuss all the different features more in detail. So we begin with the user interface. As you can see, it's a very simple user interface. We have a fairly large display, which will give us important information about the heater, including the current operating mode, the interior temperature, the timer positions, the different settings, and also in the event of a fault, 
the error codes. The large operating button itself is the main navigation um, tool, sort of. This is basically used to operate and select from the different program functions and also the different options under each program functions. This knob can be rotated both counterclockwise and clockwise. And then based on the selection, uh, to make the selection, you can press this operating button to confirm the selection. As I mentioned before, there is an LED ring around the operating button that will light up in different colors indicating the status of the heater or of the controller. So if the LED ring around the knob is red, that indicates a heating mode. If it is blue, that indicates the heater is in ventilation mode. If it is orange in color, then that indicates that the heater is set to residual heat mode. If there's a white ring around the operating button, then that usually happens when the controller is initializing for the first time. And finally, in case of a fault, the LED ring will turn red and it will begin to flash or blink, indicating that uh, the heater has encountered a fault, fault and thereby will be switching off. So this LED ring is, is an added feature which was not available on our previous controllers. And the last user interface on, on the Easy Start Pro controller is the back button. The back button is basically allows the user to navigate through the menu, select selections, and basically move back and forth uh, and, and make the right choice. If the Easy Start Pro is in the sleep mode, the display will go off uh, after about 30 seconds and touching any one of these buttons, the back button or the operating button will act reactivate the display again and the default mask will be shown. If the heater is in operation, then whatever was on the display before it switched off will be shown again. So on the display screen, you will see a list of icons that represent what we call as different functions. As you can see, there's a total of five functions available and it's all dependent on the heater that the controller is connected to. So some functions will appear, uh, may not appear for certain heaters. So for example, the residual heat function is only available for our coolant heaters, so it'll not show if the controller is connected to an airtronic heater. At any given time, only three of these functions are displayed. And whichever function appears in the middle of the screen, that function can be selected by pressing the operating button. So by rotating the knob, you're able to cycle through all these different available functions for the particular heater. So we have the heat function, which is the standard default function. We have the ventilate function. We have the residual heat function, the settings function, and then also the timer function that allows for programmed events to be activated and to be programmed. We will review each of these functions in the next coming slides. One another feature that is unique to this Easy Start Pro controller is the long press function. And this function is used for immediate heating without having to bother setting the operating time or the temperature, etc. So this is for convenience sake. All the user has to do is press the operating button for more than two seconds and the heater will start immediately in heating mode. When this function is used, 
the factory default parameters will be in effect. So if it's an electronic heater, then the heater runtime will be 30 minutes and the set point temperature will be set to a default of 72 degrees. If it's a hydronic heater, then the heater runtime is set to 30 minutes. So it's a useful feature, especially for those customers who don't want to be bothered by setting heater runtime or temperatures, etc. They want to start the heater immediately. This can come in handy. There is also the regular function of starting the heating or ventilation mode. And in this case, the user can actually go in and change the settings and achieve target settings, whatever they desire. So for the heating function, of course, if they have to call the heating function, they have to make sure that the heating function symbol is in the middle of the screen and by pressing the operating button, you confirm the selection. And once the selection has been confirmed, the next step would be to set the parameters that will appear in the bottom row of the display. So the first would be to set the operating time. As you can see, the range extends from a minimum of 10 minutes to a maximum of 120 minutes in one minute steps. And then beyond that, it still extends further from 120 minutes all the way to 720 minutes. But this time it'll be in 60 minute steps or an hour. So up to 720 minutes of a programmed time can be set. In addition to this, you also can set the heater to a continuous run as shown by the infinity symbol on the screen. Both airtronic and hydronic heaters can be set for continuous run. However, the hydronic S3 heater has a, a factory code within the ECU that limits the operation up to 720 minutes. It can be reset or extended by changing this parameter, but this can be done at the factory and if there is a customer who needs this, we should be able to do this on our end. Once the heater operating time is set, then the next information that needs to be set for the electronic heaters only is the target temperature. And the range for the target temperature extends from 57 degrees Fahrenheit all the way up to 97 degrees Fahrenheit in one degree Fahrenheit steps. The residual heat function, as I mentioned earlier, is a function that's available only for our coolant heaters. To select the function, you have to select it from the main menu, confirm the selection by pressing the operating button. And then once you confirm the selection, you will see the sub menu appear on the bottom row of the display. And then you can select between switching it on or switching it off. When you switch it on, the LED ring around the operating knob will glow in orange color, which indicates that the residual heat mode is now active. The operating time will depend on how much amount of residual heat is available in the system. And in this mode, it's only the water pump and the fan that are in operation. If the temperature of the coolant is too low to begin with, then the residual heat mode will not be activated. And as I mentioned, this function is only purely available exclusively for the hydronic heaters. Once the function is activated, the temperature of the water is constantly monitored. It has to be over 50 degrees Celsius for this function to be activated. And then once the function is activated, there is a constant monitoring that happens every five seconds to check if the temperature is within the range between 40 degrees to 50 degrees or more. If the temperature drops below 40 degrees, 
then the residual heat function will automatically be deactivated. And then from that point onwards, the user then can then restart the heater in the normal heating mode. The next available function in the main menu is the settings menu. And this is indicated by this gear symbol that you see on the screen. Just like every other function selection, if you have to get into the settings menu, you have to bring that function symbol to the middle of the screen. And as it comes to the middle of the screen, it will begin to flash indicating that it can now be selected. And once you have that in place, you confirm the selection by pressing the operating button. And then once you press the operating button, you will see the next level sub functions appear in the bottom row. So there are several actions possible under the settings menu. One is the standard settings which is basically comprises of the day of the week, time and temperature format. This, all of this can be selected. Also heating at high altitudes can be switched on and off in the settings menu. Low temperature heating mode can be selected in the settings mode. Fault diagnostics. Uh, this is basically a user level fault diagnostics uh, can be utilized during uh, or used in the settings mode. And then finally, a uh, user level reset can be performed in the settings mode. The standard settings, as I mentioned, is to set the date and time. So obviously you would select the clock symbol that appears in line number two. And then once you confirm that, you will be able to set the hours. Once the hours are confirmed, then you'll be able to set the minutes and then finally confirm by pressing the operating button. The next option is to select the time format. You could have a 12 hour format or a 24 hour format. The weekday can be selected. And then finally, the temperature format between degrees Celsius or degree Fahrenheit can be selected. So let's take a closer look at the rest of the other options in the settings menu. So the high altitude option is represented by this small little mountain symbol on line number two. And while you have this in the middle of the line or, or middle of the selection, uh, you confirm it by pressing the operating button and then you can then um, switch it on or off. This function is only applicable, as I mentioned before, to our for our Hydronic S3 12 volt CS version of the heater. This will not work with the older Hydronic S3 CL version. And if the setting will not be visible on heaters that, that um, don't require this option. So as you can see, the two options or actions that is possible once you make the selection is you can switch it on. So at 1500 meters or more, you can switch it on. And then below 1500 meters, you can switch it off. When you activate this function, the ECU, uh, an adjustment or uh, an instruction is sent out, which allows the ECU to regulate the fuel quantity so as to match with the reduction in combustion air that happens at higher elevations. It's important to note that this is not an automatic switch off function like the residual heat function. This needs to be deactivated by the user once the, the vehicle itself uh, is coming uh, below 1500 meters. So the altitude mode once activated will remain active until the user switches it off or if a reset is performed on the controller. The low heat mode. This is again a unique feature exclusive to the Easy Start Pro controller. Um, this allows for temperature reduction at the air outlet by approximately somewhere between 
approximately by 10 degrees Celsius or about 118 degrees Fahrenheit. This depends on our, the, the air ducting. So in any application that requires this, for example, uh, you need to reduce the temperature due to uh, a temperature sensitive component in the vehicle, etc. Then this feature can be utilized. To activate the function, you will select the low heat mode function in the subsection on the sub level menu. Confirm it by selecting the button, the operating button. And then once you confirm it, you have the option to either switch it on or off uh, and uh, activate it or deactivate it accordingly. As I, as I mentioned before, this function is only available for our air heaters. Next is the fault, fault diagnostics. Um, and this is indicated by this symbol in the second level menu, uh, sub level menu, which appears on the second line of the display. So you would select it from the sub level menu and confirm the selection. And once the selection is confirmed, the next step would be to confirm which faults you would like to review. You have two options. One is to review the faults of the heater that is connected to the controller or the faults of the, act, the Easy Start Pro controller itself. This is the first time that we have a controller that's able to generate its own fault code in addition to the fault that may be happening at the heater level. And then once you make the confirmation between heater or controller, then if there are any faults in the memory, these, will, these faults will be displayed in the order of their occurrence. If during a heating event, there is a fault that causes the heater to stop operating, then you will see the symbol appear on the screen which will indicate that the heater has ran into a fault. That wrench symbol indicates a fault event. In addition to that, as you know from before, the LED ring around the operating knob will also be turned on and it will begin to flash, indicating that there is an issue. Now, the LED ring will stop flashing when you cancel by pressing the operating button. So if the user presses the operating button, the LED ring will stop flashing, but the wrench symbol will remain on the screen indicating the heater has had a fault. Now, in the fault diagnostic mode, if you select either heater or controller, and then select the option to read it, you're able to review all these codes. And um, as I mentioned, these are basic user level codes. These are not, uh, or I should say user level error messages. These are not diagnostic fault codes for the shop technician. There is a description given under each error message for each error message. Uh, and in some cases, uh, it may be confusing to the end customer. Uh, so the message itself should not be taken at face value or well, I should say the description uh, should not be taken as an indication of a particular component having been failed. It's an indication of a potential failure. So some of the uh, error messages are pretty simple. So if you have an under voltage, for example, or an over voltage, that is pretty straightforward. But when you see something like fuel supply or pump, this usually will come up if your heater is not able to successfully start even after making two start attempts. And the message is 
the, the purpose of the message is to imply that there is a failure, a stock failure, that may be due to some issues with the supply of fuel or maybe even in the fuel pump itself. However, uh, the servicing technician will have to extract the actual fault code and then perform the repairs based on the active fault code and not just based on the message itself. So you can see there are about a total of eight messages that could be that would indicate a potential problem and the reason for having these user level messages is to kind of indicate to the customer or the operator as to what may be the likely cause and in some cases they may be able to fix the problem themselves without having to tear apart a unit or etc so for example when you have an overheating uh, event, well, even if it's due to some someone blocking an air ducting, for example, then that can that's a quite an easy fix. Or when you have under voltage being uh, displayed on the screen, again, that indicates that issue lies outside the heater, uh, and that can then be looked at separately by the customer. As I mentioned, the controller itself has its own set of error messages and that will indicate potential issues. Um, so that we have about six error messages in total. All of this information is, uh, is uh, listed in the Easy Start Pro manual. And once again, this is basically for the user. There is also a reset function that's available in the main settings menu. Uh, this reset fun function is more of a user level reset. This should not be confused with a factory reset. A factory reset is totally different. Uh, it's, a, it's not available in the settings menu. It's available in the workshop menu, which we will uh, discuss later. But from the user perspective, they can reset the controller and when they do that, um, basically what happens, it it's, uh, resets the programmed timer events, date, and clock settings, etc. Once you confirm the selection, the option is to select between yes and no. And of course, if, you, if the user selects yes and confirms it again by pressing the operating button, then all of these parameters will be reset and will have to be reprogrammed by the user. However, selecting no means all of the programmed events and clock settings, date and time settings will be retained. I'm just going to take a pause here real quick and take a look at the chat panel to see if there's any questions. I don't see any. And we still have only two participants. So that's fine. We will go and continue with our presentation. So let's move on to the next slide. Here we talk about the timer function, uh, which is an important function for many customers. The timer function is activated by selecting the calendar icon in the main menu. And once you active, once you select that and confirm it by pressing the operating button, you will see a summary of the three block of events uh, that is available. As you can see, there's a checkbox, and then besides the checkbox, there's there are numbers one, two, and three indicating the three block of events that could be programmed and activated. When you see the checkboxes uh, without any kind of tick marks within it, it means none of these programs have been activated. By default, there is a factory default for each of these programs, which we will discuss later, but 
a blank checkbox indicates none of these programmed events have been activated. If it is activated, then it will show up as shown in picture number two. And in this case, in this example, it indicates that the program, program block number two has been activated. Just like the old seven day timers, easy start timers, these block of events will be activated only for a cycle of seven consecutive days, depending on your programmed instructions. It's not meant to be continuously activated for the rest of the year. The checkbox beside the event block indicates that this event is active for a cycle of total seven days only. So to call up the, the programmed block, you would confirm um, which block you would call by selecting one, two, and three. And once you select the, the programmed event, uh, you will be in the configuration mode. And in the configuration mode, you have a couple of actions that you can perform. One is you can activate the event one second is you can deactivate the event. And then the third is you can uh, program the event or customize the event. When you do this for the very first time, um, it will basically show you the factory default settings uh, for the event. Um, so which would it say the heater would start at seven in the morning, uh, it'll run for 30 minutes, It'll maintain a set temperature of 72 degrees and so on and so forth. So all those factory defaults will kick in. But selecting this gear symbol, this is not to be confused with the gear symbol that appears in the main menu. This is in the sub-level menu that appears once you make the selection for programming. So in the sub-level menu, when you select this, then you're able to program each event according to your needs. So you begin by selecting which days of the week you would like the heater to operate. Um, you could choose individual days, a block of days, uh, and all you have to do is you cycle through the days and against each day of the week, you'll see a small checkbox and by Pressing the operating button, you're able to confirm um, select it or deselect it if it's already selected. And then you cycle through the rest of the days of the week and then make the choice. Once you do that, then the next parameter that needs to be set is the, the start time or the departure time. So that would be indicated by this clock that comes up. You will first set the hour part of the clock and then you'll set the minutes part of the clock. And then finally, you will select your heating or ventilation function. So once you select the function, depending on the heater, so if you have an electronic heater um, and you're selecting the heating mode, then you can then further proceed to set the desired temperature. And as I mentioned in the previous slide, the range is between 57 to 97 degrees Fahrenheit and one degree Fahrenheit steps, or 14 to 36 degrees Celsius and one degree Celsius steps. And this process can be repeated for each of these timed event blocks. When you are in configuration mode and when you're doing this programming part of it, you're only setting the program. You're not actually activating it. To activate the program so it can be executed, you'll have to select the on function, sub function, and then confirm. And at which point you will see that there will be a checkbox 
or a tick mark that will be displayed in the checkbox besides the program that you have activated. Next is the workshop menu. So this is basically where, which will be, which has to be, uh, which will be accessed by the shop level technician. This is not meant for the user or the end user or the operator. Uh, and that's why uh, the information on this is uh, detailed in a, in a totally different manual. Uh, you won't find it in the, in the installation manual. So in the user guide, you won't find this information. This is in a separate document so as to kind of uh, indicate that, you know, this is to be performed by the shop technician only. So to gain access to the workshop level uh, functions, you have to select the settings icon in the main menu, which is the gear icon. And once you confirm the selection, you will see all of the sub-level menus appear. As we mentioned earlier, all of these sub-level functions will appear. And the default that will always come first is the clock function, and it will begin to flash. But once, when you see that happen, or once you, once you see that on the display, the next step would be to press and hold the back button for more than two seconds. And this will then um, allow us to access the workshop mode and then program it accordingly for all of the different functions that are available. So you can see in the workshop level mode, you can program the language, program start or departure times. Uh, you can review the codes, the actual fault codes that are stored in the error memory uh, for both the heater and also for the controller. You're able to clear the codes uh, that are stored in the error memory for both the heaters and the controllers. You're able to review the actual hour counter. And this is uh, unlike in the past where the controller itself used to have its own counter. This information is actually pulled from the ECU itself. So you're able to really see what are the actual hours logged in the ECU of the heater, even without having to connect to easy scan. There is an additional feature on this controller called as maintenance intervals. Uh, this um, option, um, if it is activated, uh, then you'll be able to uh, review the status of the um, uh, interval itself um, between uh, what was the maximum set and what's the current level. And you're also able to reset it. By default, the maintenance interval is switched to off position. You're able to set the control sensor for the heater. Um, this is basically for the air heater. Uh, you can select between the sensor that is um, in the heater or part of the heater uh, harness, or you could select uh, the controller sensor uh, sensor that's on the controller or part of the controller sensor harness. Um, also, there is uh, a selection that could be made uh, um, for uh, indicator sensor or sensor on display. Um, so if it's an air heater, you could then again pick and choose uh, which of those uh, operational sensors would you like to read so that uh, the information can be displayed on the screen on the Easy Start Pro. The next level in, of the workshop menu will show you the revision or the version number. Uh, so this is uh, fairly useful to find out if you have the latest version of the controller or the older version. And one of the things about the Easy Start Pro controller that's unique uh, and sets it apart from other controllers is the fact that these controllers can be reflashed with the latest software or firmware, I should say. 
but with the help of easy scan so unlike previous controllers which were pretty much um, um, set in stone sort of uh, these controllers uh, can be reflashed uh, with the newest software whenever it's available and uh, it can be updated to the latest versions. There is also a display option uh, in the workshop menu. Uh, this allows you to test the display screens whenever there's a customer or end user complaint about I can't really see what's on the display or it's you know, not visible, etc. You can uh, go into the display option and carry out some testing. Um, and then finally, we have the actual factory reset of the Easy Start Pro Controller. So let's take a closer look at each one of these options one at a time to, and look at, look at it a little bit more in detail in the next coming slides. So to begin with the language, every Easy Start Pro controller comes uh, with the default language of English. And in, in addition to the default language, there's also the option to select German. This comes with, this is, these are the factory defaults. Now, if a customer wishes to choose to change uh, or the language, they can change uh, the German language with any of these 27 other languages. The English language will always remain as a default and it cannot be changed. But the German language option can be changed to any of these 27 programmable languages. Uh, and then it has to be done using easy scan. So that's the first option on the, in the workshop menu. The second option is the ability to set start and departure times. Now, for those of you who are familiar with the easy start timer, you may know about this. Uh, if the start time is selected, the, um, the controlled heater or the heater group will start at that starting time that's programmed in the timer. However, if a departure time is selected, then uh, the controlled heater uh, or the heater group will start on the selected day before reaching the set departure time. So if in the programmed event, if you have set, let's say 7 a.m. and you have uh, set a runtime of 20 minutes or let's say 60 minutes, then the heater will actually start at 6 a.m and then stop at 7 a.m. And that's what is meant by departure time. We will take a closer review uh, uh, on this a little bit more later. Um, the next option in the workshop menu is the error memory option. Um, if you have an error code that appears on your Easy Start Pro display screen, uh, which shows a wrench symbol with the word service. This usually indicates a fault code, an active fault code uh, in the unit that caused the heater to stop operating. So you have to first go into the workshop menu and then select error memory and confirm the selection by pressing the operating button. And once you confirm the selection, then you have several other options that will appear. Um, you're able to select which memory you would like to access, whether you'd like to access the memory of the control heater or the controller unit itself. And then once you make that choice of selection, then uh, it gives you further options between would you like to read the information or would you like to delete or clear the information? And then accordingly, uh, the display will update with the uh, required information. If you choose read and confirm it, then the first error code will be displayed on the screen. And then by rotating the operating button, you can then proceed further to review the rest of the error codes that are stored in the ECU memory. As I mentioned during the webinar yesterday, 
all of the latest generation heaters, the CAN bus versions of these of the heaters, have uh, an extended uh, error memory space, uh, which will allow for up to ten uh, fault codes to be stored. So uh, it's an extended memory, and that can be accessed through this option on the Easy Start Pro. Once you have read the error memory, you have the option to even clear the memory or delete the fault codes. Once again, as I mentioned, uh, this is not a preferred option. You could do it. However, it's not, in my opinion, it should not be a preferred option because um, well, you clear the codes, you lose all the um, you lose all the history, historical data on that code. Um, it's totally cleared from the memory itself. Um, and that means now you lose that information that could have assisted you in actual, uh, in your troubleshooting process. The next option uh, in the workshop menu is the hour counter. Uh, each of these options will appear in line number two and once it appears, it will begin to flash or blink that indicating that would you like to select it and then you confirm by pressing the operating button. And once you do that, uh, it will actually give you the actual operating hours stored in the ECU. Um, this is handy because you don't need to connect the computer. You're able to get it um, you know, right away in the application itself. And as you know, our heaters have um, warranty based on uh, number of operating hours or uh, the the number of years past the installation date uh, so this information can be use, useful having this information is useful but uh, it cannot substitute for or further detailed information that uh, would come through easy scan diagnostic test reports uh, so those are still required in order to process warranty. But uh, for the sake of um, informing the customer if their heaters are still under warranty or not, uh, this could be a very uh, useful tool. In the workshop menu, you're also able to set uh, the options for the control sensor. Uh, basically, the control sensor will define which sensor has to be used to control the heater operation. This is primarily only for air heaters. And um, in the air heaters, uh, you can then choose between the sensor that is attached to the air heater or part of the air heater. And then, or you could decide to choose uh, between the sensor that is built into the controller, the Easy Start Pro controller, or attached to the Easy Start Pro controller. So a total of four sensor options can be chosen. And then based on the selection, the heater will use that sensor moving forward for operational purposes. The next option is the sensor on display or the indicator sensor. For water heaters, there are two actions possible. One is you could select none. Uh, that means no sensor display is required, or you could choose control unit because this controller has the external sensor embedded in it. And whatever is being measured by that sensor will be displayed on the screen. For the air heater, uh, you have three options. You could choose none if you don't require a display sensor. Uh, you could choose control unit if you would like to use the sensor that is built into the Easy Start Pro controller or use a sensor that is attached to the Easy Start Pro controller. And the third option would be to select um, uh, the use of uh, the air heater um, sensor as uh, to show on the display. Now, before I forget, uh, I had mentioned this yesterday on the Aerotronic uh, second generation and also the third generation heaters. 
if you do decide to use uh, an additional sensor attached to the airtronic heater as your main sensor, uh, then that has to be coded in using easy scan diagnostics. Otherwise, uh, the ECU still will um, default to the uh, to the internal sensor, built-in internal sensor, regardless. And once you make the selection, then you confirm it by pressing the operating button. So you can then program the temperature offset. So once you have a display sensor, uh, you can then program. The next step would be to program the temperature offset. The range uh, is, is from minus 10 degrees Fahrenheit to plus 10 degrees Fahrenheit in one degree Fahrenheit increments, or minus five degrees Celsius to plus five degrees Celsius in one degree Celsius increments. This temperature offset is basically to intentionally set the offset so as to assist the customer in knowing uh, or basically um, or assist the heater uh, in understanding uh, the difference uh, in temperature zones within the application and um, thus uh, avoiding any kind of early shutdowns or lowering of heating output etc. Next step in the Easy Start no Pro menu is uh, workshop menu is the version uh, information. If you confirm, if you select that option and confirm it, it will give you the all the parameters of the device itself, including the ID, the software version, hardware version, etc. And as I mentioned, this is useful, especially if you have uh, uh, Easy Start Pro controllers. Um, for several years and you would like to, you know, uh, know whether it's an older software or the newest form of software or firmware in the device itself. Next option in the workshop menu is the display option. And by selecting it, you're able to test the, the, the pixel display. Uh, so if you select uh, pixel display in the sub-level menu and confirm um, it uh, basically checks optically if all the pixels are displayed. So you're able to really see if there's a damage to the screen that doesn't allow for any pixels to be displayed, etc. So that's a good test. And then you can proceed to the next uh, options in the sub-level menu. And you can um, change the brightness levels and also the contrast levels uh, based on the customer's needs. Uh, and this can be really handy, especially when the customer is complaining about um, oh, it's too bright or I can barely see the screen. Uh, this adjustments uh, can, so, um, can serve the purpose. Okay. Next option on the workshop menu is the factory reset. Uh, like I mentioned before, this is not the same as the user level reset. This is a complete factory reset. Uh, it will reset everything to the actual delivery conditions. Um, so if you have like, for example, a mismatch error uh, that does not uh, go away, then we would, uh, the first step we would indicate, we would want you to do is uh, do a factory reset of the controller. When you run into issues like heat and not detected, et cetera, do a factory reset first and this factory reset we mean the factory reset that is part of the workshop menu and not the user level menu so confirm press yes or no reconfirm and then the factory reset will be performed maintenance intervals um, as i mentioned this option by default is a switch to off um, it's up to the customer uh, if they choose to activate it. Uh, if they choose to activate it, uh, they have to select it. And then uh, once they have selected it by pressing the operating button, 
then in the sub-level menu, they will see um, the actions uh, to either switch activate it, switch it on, or deactivate it. Um, and uh, if uh, if if it is activated, then the next part would be to choose the uh, the maintenance interval itself uh, in in total number of hours. Uh, the range that can be selected uh, lies between a minimum of 10 hours to a maximum of a thousand hours um, in uh, 10 hour increments. And then if you would like more than 1,000 hours, then it can extend all the way to 5,000 hours, but this time in 500-hour increments. So depending on the, um, the preference, uh, it can be chosen accordingly. Depending on the application, it can be chosen accordingly. And once it's activated, then the, the controller itself will um, log the number of hours the heater has been in operation and then once it uh, exceeds the set interval uh, then a message will come up on the screen uh, to service the heater um, and so on. So setting maintenance interval is one of the actions that can be performed. Uh, the other part is to read the status of the maintenance interval. Uh, so you will select status uh, in the sub-level menu. And once you confirm that, uh, it'll actually display the status. So in this example, you can see this unit has run for 232 hours of the total targeted maximum value of 600 hours. And then the last option would be to reset it. And uh, in this case, you'll select reset in the in the sub-level menu. And uh, once you confirm that, uh, the maintenance interval is now um, basically reset to zero. Um, all the hours that are logged in the in the counter is reset to zero, and the counter starts counting again from that point onwards for the next uh, level event. So moving on to some wiring diagrams or wiring uh, configurations. Uh, we had we saw the slide yesterday. This is the basic configuration of the Easy Start Pro controller where you connect one Easy Start Pro controller to one heater. Um, this is most of the time, I would say, the most common application. Um, and as we saw yesterday, the main harness assembly will have uh, a branch of the harness, a short branch of the harness that will have um, this, these uh, CAN bus, uh, um, Deutsch connectors for CAN bus connections. And then uh, in the kit itself, uh, um, when you order the, the controller kit, um, it includes the harness um, that will be required uh, for connecting the Easy Start Pro controller. And as you can see, the harness uh, comes uh, pre-assembled on one end with the connectors, uh, the Deutsch connector and the four pin connector. And the four pin connector is what connects to the Easy Start Pro controller. The other end, end of the wire, it will be uh, cut to length and then uh, terminals that are provided in the kit is then crimped onto it. And then it's inserted into the female uh, uh, Deutsch connector. Uh, and then um, once you insert them in there, you lock it in with the lock that's provided with the kit. And then the whole assembly is then connected to the um, main heater harness. Of course, to connect it, you'll have to remove the cap with the resistances on it. So you pull the cap off, connect it over here, and then the cap moves to the extreme end of the CAN bus line that is close to the controller, and that's where it will be. So this is the uh, most common application of the Easy Start Pro controller from the wiring configuration point of view. But as we mentioned yesterday, um, the Easy Start 
microcontroller can also be used for connecting to more than one heater, etc. And we will discuss that shortly. Also, yesterday we talked about the sensor, and also today we mentioned it. So, as I again, um, the electronic heater comes with its own default inbuilt sensor, which is embedded in the ECU. Uh, and then we have the option of using an external sensor that's attached to the harness of the heater. But in order to actually start using it, we'll have to program it by easy scan so that the heater will select that sensor number two instead of the sensor number one. And in addition, with the Easy Start Pro controller, we have the embedded sensor number three, which is the default. So in the in the display, when we talk about control sensor, and if we choose uh, control unit, then uh, it automatically defaults to sensor number three. Uh, the Easy Start Pro harness also has um, um, a connector, a three pin connector to which you can attach an additional external sensor, sensor number four. And as soon as you attach it to the Easy Start Pro controller, then that sensor, additional sensor or sensor number four is automatically set as a default. That means in the uh, control sensor option, if you were to choose control unit, then that would automatically imply that sensor number four will now be used. So when you have two Easy Start Pro controllers to one heater, um, so this slide shows how the wiring diagram and connections would look like from the connection standpoint. As you can see, you have your main heater harness and then you have the adapter harness uh, for the first uh, controller. And uh, if you had just one controller, the cap on the adapter harness would move towards this end of the harness. However, because we are connecting two controllers, then um, we are basically connecting the female end of the harness, of the, an additional harness. And we are basically uh, daisy chaining the, the harnesses together and the terminating the, the Deutsch connector with the terminating resistor now moves through the extreme end of the canvas line, which would be your adapter harness number two for your second AZ Star Pro controller. Another way of using the Easy Start Pro controller would be to have one Easy Start Pro controller uh, to control two heaters. Uh, they need not be the same heater. You could have an airtronic and a hydronic heater, or as I mentioned before, you could have two groups of heaters, uh, and each group can have a maximum of two heaters each. Uh, the only uh, condition being in a group, you can only have identical heaters. So you could have two airtronic and two hydronic, or you could have two hydronic and again another two hydronic, or you could have two airtronic and two more airtronics and so on. So in each group, the heaters have to be identical and you can have a maximum of two groups. And uh, one easy start pro control can handle two heaters or two heater groups. And here again, you can see uh, both the heaters, heater number one and heater number two, and uh, you have the, the Easy Start Pro adapter harness uh, that is um, customizable. You can cut it to length, install the terminals, um, and um, and then pin it to the connector, and then plug it into the heater number one, and then you have the um, combo harness. Uh, which will be required in addition to that harness that comes with the Easy Start Pro controller kit. And this harness will allow us to tie or connect uh, the two CAN bus lines to, together. So what's happening here is because each heater has a terminating resistor on one end already, uh, we are removing the cap on the Deutsch connectors from both heaters, cap number one and then cap number two. 
And what we're doing here is we are pulling out those terminating resistors uh, from the, those Deutsch connectors. And then uh, we are using this adapter harness, this twisted pair cable, uh, and we are crimping on terminals and then inserting those terminals into these Deutsch connectors and then uh, uh, locking it in with the lock provided and then what you do is uh, you then connect um, from this end on the adapter harness to the main harness of heater number two so you can see this is the uh, combo harness uh, that will be required one end of the harness will be pre-crimped with the terminal so you don't have to bother about that this Deutsch connector cap comes off one heater. You remove the terminating resistors, insert the terminal, lock it in, and then you run it all the way to heater number two, cut it to length, insert the terminals, lock it in into the connector, onto the connector, and then connect this to the furthest end of the Easy Start Pro adapter harness. So this end will connect to the Easy Start. Either end could connect, but I'm just saying one end connects to the Easy Start Pro adapter harness, and the other end actually connects to the heater harness of the second heater. So I hope this is uh, clear. All of this information is available in the manuals. They are very detailed. If you do have questions, I mean, don't hesitate to hesitate to reach out to us. In the next slide, we're talking about uh, two Easy Start Pro controllers uh, with two heaters. Um, so each heater has um, uh, their own uh, controller. We have two controllers and two heaters, and um, it's possible to synchronize both controllers to operate either one of the heaters. And again, it's very similar to the previous assembly that we saw. You're still using the combo harness with the pinned connection on one end and the open end, which can be cut to length, and then the terminals provided can be crimped on and you basically do the same thing all over again over here too. The 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 difference here is that between the previous and the this configuration is you will need the additional adapter, easy start pro adapter harness. Uh, to connect to the second heater so that the Easy Start Pro controller can be connected to it also. But in e both of these cases, uh, we are doing away with the terminating resistances because it's no longer needed on these two ends because uh, when you consider the two heater harnesses, they already have the terminating resistor on one end already. So that accounts for the two resistances that we need. Uh, along the CAN bus line on the two furthest ends. If you have more than one heater connected, then yes, you can um, designate uh, the heater um, number, um, basically um, identify them in, in the controller, which one is heater number one or heater number two and so on. and. Um, if you were to use the long press function to activate the heating mode, uh, uh, then it basically will activate both heaters at the same time with one single click of that uh, operating button for more than two seconds. Um, in the workshop mode, there is also uh, the swap function, which allows you to switch the groups around between one and two or two and one. Um, this is uh, this can be done also by using the function in the workshop menu. Thank you for watching. Please contact us if you have any technical questions. Also, please remember to provide us with your feedback and comments. Thank you and goodbye.